As a book lover visiting Key West, I sought out places that would speak to my love of all things books, writers, quiet spaces to read, beauty, calmness, and I think I succeeded. As a book lover visiting Key West, the Hemingway House is probably going to be at the top of your list for visiting. Whether Hemingway is one of your favorite authors, or maybe you're not really convinced that you are a big fan of Hemingway, this is still a really great visit for anyone who is a book lover. A guided tour is included in the $18 ticket fee, and the tours start every 15 minutes. So you are able to not only see this archived history of Hemingway's life and all of the historic paraphernalia that this museum has collected, but you learn the more personalized side of Hemingway. And what we learn by visiting this home that Ernest Hemingway lived in in the 1930s with his second wife, Pauline, is not always admirable, but it is real. And we can see from his history with war and failed relationships how he is able to sprinkle that realness of his own life into his novels. I am going to share two places that I suggest going to to actually read in Key West, but the Hemingway House is not one of them. It is a pretty loud place, not only because of all of the tourists visiting, but also because of the fans that they have running throughout the house to help with the humidity. Of course, the most famous residents of the Ernest Hemingway home are the approximately 60 polydactyl cats that live there. These six-toed cats were honestly the highlight for us. The Hemingway House Museum is open 9 to 5 every day, 365 days a year. And my biggest tip is that if you want to be able to enjoy this in a less crowded setting, you want to be there when they open. Other than searching for cats in every nook and cranny that we could, inside and out, we also enjoyed the treasure hunt of counting typewriters. I think we counted over half a dozen. The architectural design of the house afforded so much light in these gorgeous arch windows, and you really could see the jungle of Key West outside. I also really loved all of the bathrooms at this museum home. The highlight of this house, in addition to the cats and the bathrooms, of course, is this second level wraparound veranda. You're able to wander around the house without actually being on a tour, so you're able to spend as much time up here as you want listening to the roosters and the floor creak. The views of Key West from here are breathtaking. Look. The catwalk from Ernest Hemingway's bedroom out to his writing studio is no longer there, but you are still able to walk up and see his writing studio. And of course, it matches in the same style as the house, external and internal, and there are cats. The pool at the Hemingway house was the only one within 100 miles when it was built at an exorbitant amount of money in the 1930s. And today, at 80,000 gallons, it is still the largest pool in Key West. The on-site bookstore is tiny and crowded and pretty loud. It has multiple versions of all of Hemingway's works, and it also has associated books, such as biographies about Hemingway, or additional information about the house if you're interested. They have lists of Hemingway's books in order of publication. They also have a list of specific books that he wrote in Key West. And of course, they have a deal. If you buy a certain amount, you can get a discount and a tote bag. The bookshop doubles as a gift shop, and they sell sundry items and souvenir items for tourists. But the draw is obviously the books, and they do 
seem well stocked with a lot of interesting books such as a short story collection by Ernest Hemingway. And of course there are also bookstore cats which are everyone's favorite. As far as the care of the cats, they are so well loved and well cared for. An employee told us that the cats are put into these kennels overnight in order to protect them from the other city cats that seem to jump over the walls at night. The staff member also told us that the cats are really well fed. They get about 60 pounds of food in for the cats each week. Visitors are told that they are allowed to pet any of the cats that are out, but that you just need to be cautious. And if the cats are trying to get away, you don't want to harass them. You just kind of want to let them do what they want to do. All of the cats here at the Hemingway house are polydactyl, which means they have the DNA for six toes. Sometimes the six toes don't manifest, but they do have the ability to bear kittens that do have the six toes. The first cat was named Snow White, and after that, Hemingway named all of his cats after famous people who obviously love to come and visit and find out a cat was named after them. The staff continue that tradition today, and you can actually follow the Hemingway house cats on Instagram. The grounds here are stunning, and you might be able to find a quiet place here or there, but it's so crowded. It is not where I would recommend to sit down and read any of the books you bought in the gift shop. Instead, I recommend the Key West Butterfly and Nature Conservatory. Here you have direct and close access to stunning butterflies and birds, and there are places to sit and relax. It's lovely. <laughs> So you might think that the flamingos are too loud for reading buddies. However, it is a sound that they make first thing in the morning and then they kind of settle back down and then it's back to being peaceful. I also think the addition of the flamingos is perfect for a book lover because they're named Rhett and Scarlet after Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. Tickets are around $17 and I arrived when it opened at 9 a.m. They allow visitors to enter as late as 4.30 p.m. and then it closes at 5.30. Each time that I have visited the conservatory, I have brought two books. Bringing two books allows me to mood read a bit. So I brought the first book in the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb. It is called The Assassin's Apprentice. It's sort of a cult classic for fantasy readers, if you will. But when I needed the freedom of getting out of a deeply entrenched fantasy lore book, I read something with a little bit more local flavor, and that was The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. You can take as much time as you want in this conservatory. It really is not large, but it feels like you could spend all day there. They have identification boards so that you are able to figure out of the birds that you've seen, what are they? They have so many different kinds of butterflies and plants, and it's just a very zen, calming place to be. It can get crowded, but there is this sense of calmness even in the crowds. Mm -hmm. 
The other place that I found that has a perfect reading environment is the Audubon House in downtown Key West. Now, the name is a little misleading because John Audubon did not live here. He did, however, visit it, and there is some local lore that ties him to the house. Tickets cost $16. It opens at 9.30, and the last entry is at 4.15. The house is full of his artwork and books and the outside garden tour area is stunning and the perfect place to sit down with a book and read. And don't worry, if you forgot to bring a book, you are not book stranded. There is a gift shop that sells Audubon books, bird books, as well as generalized Florida nonfiction. And there are also fiction options from local writers. Thanks so much for watching and until next time.